Obsessive compulsive disorder is an anxiety disorder that affects about 1% of the population. The symptoms of this disorder include recurrent and persistent thoughts, repetitive, often ritualistic behaviors, and the presence of marked anxiety surrounding these thoughts and actions. Although most people experience some obsessions and compulsions, these behaviors are considered abnormal only when they cannot be controlled and when they significantly reduce the quality of a person's life. Laura and Marna are longtime friends who have both suffered from obsessive compulsive disorder since adolescence. Although both women live relatively normal lives, their disorder interferes in significant ways. For example, simple actions such as filing an important paper can set off a spiral of compulsive behaviors. These behaviors can become highly ritualized and can occupy an entire day. When I was in school, I would walk down the halls and I would be looking at other people and I thought, they're not, they don't have this in their brain. They're not, I mean, it was just, it's, they weren't obsessing. I was acutely aware. Me too. That I was, yeah. um, different or whatever. Yeah, different and agonizing and I wanted, I wanted to be like them for a minute, to have some relief. I thought I was completely weird. In, in high school, I would spend a, a 45 minutes putting on mascara and like each little lash. Why am I doing this, I would say to myself. This is weird. None of my other friends take this long to put on mascara. I have two major OCD things. Um, and the major one would be like checking either paperwork, um, clothing tags, or zippers. The other one that I hate the most, that really is, you know brings shame you know inside of me or whatever, um, is the the picking of the scabs, the obsessively picking and repicking and repicking scabs, and that's that's the most painful for me. On a bad day with my OCD. I wouldn't be able to figure out what to wear. Ugh. Would be running around, and then um, I'd be sweating a lot because I'd be getting nervous because I'm running late. Um, and then I wouldn't be able to find the particular paperwork that I needed to take to an important meeting that day. Because I, what I'll do is I'll, I'll put it away. And then uh, the, the urge, and you can feel it. It's almost like a a, yeah. a, a surge that you have to. Mm. We've actually never talked about this this particular aspect, but it's like a surge. And oh, I gotta check. I gotta see. Is is that other insurance paper behind there? And what's behind that? And 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 what's behind that? And what's in the other little? You know how dividers in a like a you know portable file kind of thing. And so I just end up checking all of it. And, you know, um, in my worst days, several years back, I would check, uh, I have to cut the tags off my clothes because I'll check, oh, made in Korea, oh, and, and it's a large, and um, I know brand names for zippers because I, um, did I ever tell you about I the zipper one? I yeah. <laughs> that you know all the tags. Yalon, Y-A-L-O-N, <laughs> the Yalon company, um, so things like that. Um, okay, but I w what I would do is, like, I'd have to feel, see, right now I'm wanting to like feel the ledge. I'd have to like feel it and go, okay, there's a ledge. Okay, where's the ledge? There's a ledge. Okay. And this is all like in my mind kind of thing. <laughs> and, and the one that's in my pillow, I would lift it up and down and up and down and up and down. People with obsessive compulsive disorder often become obsessed by unpleasant or inappropriate thoughts. As you will see in this segment, for example, they might think about harming someone they love, and when they are unable to purge this idea from their mind, they become highly distressed. Furthermore, they might feel driven to perform a ritualistic act, such as hand washing or counting, in order to avert some perceived threat. As is typical of people with OCD, both Laura and Marna are keenly aware that their obsessions are irrational and counterproductive. Still, they have great difficulty controlling their obsessive thoughts and behaviors. On a bad day, uh, on my worst, one of my worst days, I was up 
all night, so seven or eight hours, trying to figure out what to wear. And I was aware that this was happening, and it, it was frustrating. It was, um, it was sad. And I didn't know how I was going to get out of that, but I, I had to figure it out. So, but that's seven or eight hours. And then I was exhausted. Mm. And then I had to go to school. So, and I knew that it was going to affect my whole next day. But what do you do? I mean, I, I just couldn't, couldn't figure it out. So, so that's, that's seven or eight hours, ruminating on that. And you had... Yeah, and maybe it wasn't quite seven or eight hours, but it, it was, it, it was so... Four hour. I think, it, you know, one night it, it was, um, it was yeah, about ten or so, and I just felt compelled to look at all the tags on my shirts, and I'm sitting there looking, and I kept saying to myself, go to bed, Laura, go to bed, and instead I just would check the tags, and I finally, maybe about like 2.30 or so, so like four and a half, five hours later, I just was like, oh, must go to bed, and finally made it, but I was so mad at myself, and, and then so it's embarrassing, and I think, you know, normal people don't do this, you know. I try not to go grocery shopping anymore. I avoid it at all costs. Okay, so I've got, I've, I'm going to the produce aisle and I'm getting some celery. And which bunch do you, do you take? And um, if there are people around, then it creates more anxiety. So I'm, I'm carefully, I'm looking at each bunch and I know, you know, okay, that one's not going to do it. And um, So then I have to, I, I might... I might pick it up. Okay, I might find a bench that I like, pick it up, put it in the grocery cart, and <clears throat> walk down, and I know that's not the one that I want. <laughs> so I'll just kind of strategically, okay, as soon as that customer goes down to the next aisle, I'll go back and get that other bench that I thought, yeah, that's the better bench. Sometimes I, I just have this compelling urge to step on the gas and just, just go. And um, then if a pedestrian is crossing, Pedestrians crossing the street, and I will have this compelling urge to to run them over. And uh, I mean, I've never done that. And I learned that if you get into a situation like that, you can just put the car in neutral, and that will help. And I have done that um, at times because I just don't want to deal with uh, with the urge or the the fear of actually running them over. Um, I've been walking down the street with a friend and felt the urge to just push him into traffic. And so uh, I thought, you know, let's just go over on the other block, walk, walk down the other street. So, and um, I, I don't think that I would ever do it, but I have the thought nevertheless, and it's disturbing. During the 1990s, researchers made great strides in developing treatments for people with OCD. Today, a combination of behavior therapy and medications can reduce obsessive-compulsive symptoms in nearly 60% of those who suffer from this condition.